So, Blue Beetle just released, and I really, really loved it. I loved the themes, the performances, the practical effects. It didn't reinvent the wheel or anything, but I had a really great time. And it's the unofficial start to DC's new Cinematic Universe reboot. There's been a lot of talk about what other characters should get adapted onto the big screen. I've been a DC Comics fan for as long as I can remember. It's a world with so much interesting lore and fun characters that we've barely been able to scratch the surface of in film. And so I'm really excited to see some more of these characters finally get their shot in the movies. And the one character that I'm dying to see finally get adapted into a movie is... Batman. I know, he's pretty obscure, but if you ask me, he deserves more of a spotlight. This video is brought to you by Dave. Dave is the banking app that's leveling the financial playing field. There's a lot of anxiety and stress that comes with certain expenses. Traditional cash advances just make those feelings worse. Americans pay banks billions in overdraft fees each year, including a whopping $11 billion in 2021 alone. So Dave was created to make these predatory fees a thing of the past by spotting members the money they needed without charging them the standard $35. When you download Dave, you could get up to $500 in five minutes or less, no credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash advance to get you the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. Extra cash gives you the money to buy groceries, fill up your tank, fix your car, or catch up on bills without you having to wait for your next paycheck. They make it as simple and easy as possible. When you get a cash advance from Dave, it's like getting your own money from the future without any other strings attached. You can even build up credit when you settle up on time. I'm very inexperienced when it comes to any finances. It's all very intimidating and I'm scared to just walk into a bank. But Dave can make managing your money so much easier with fee-free goal tracking and easy ways to find a side hustle to make more money. Download the Dave app or go to dave.com slash Troy. And thanks to Dave, for sponsoring this video. Okay, but for real though, for the past 40 years, DC and Warner Brothers have been absolutely obsessed with Batman. He's always been a popular character, but with the massive success of Tim Burton's Batman in 1989, Batman basically became the face of the company and the only character that they seemed to care about. After that movie's release, basically anything and everything had to do with the Caped Crusader. He got constantly adapted into movies, TV, and games. He was thrown into comics and other media he otherwise had no business being a part of. They even went so far as to try and make all of their other characters more like Batman. The character was already successful, don't get me wrong, but after that movie, they saw him as a recipe for success. Which doesn't really make sense to me, because if a Batman movie was a huge success and made him your landmark brand mascot, how come they never really tried it again with their thousands of other characters? Just Batman alone wasn't the reason that movie was a hit, but a combination of putting that character with the right director and creative team and letting them try something new with it. It's kind of like right now with the Barbie movie, which was like a huge success because it's really good and made by really talented people. And the studios are looking at that and saying, oh yes, we need to make more doll movies. Like, no, that's not, hang on, wait, that's what you learned? But that's why I'm excited for this reboot, because regardless of company politics and terrible business decisions and whatever came before, in theory, this new universe should allow for other characters and creators to get their own spotlight and maybe become household names for a new generation. And the first character I'd want to see is Plastic Man. Created in 1941 by cartoonist Jack Cole, Eel O'Brien was a criminal who, after being doused by chemicals during a heist and given the ability to transform and change his body into any shape, changed his ways and became a hero. DC has this reputation of being dark, which I think is kind of bullshit. Just like any fictional universe, the characters at DC are varied and different. They're not all brooding loner vigilantes, and so I think a Plastic Man movie could help with that reputation a little bit. His humor is so ingrained into his character Character, not in just your traditional superhero action quips kind of way. Oh, something is definitely bleeding. <laughs> but the comedy and the slapstick take priority over anything else. It helps to make him distinct from the other heroes around him, including the ones who have the same powers as him, because there are a lot of stretchy heroes out there. There's, a, there's so many of them. And you could really lean into the silliness when it comes to his powers. I think it'd be fun if they intentionally looked weird and funny and silly, because that's what the character is. Don't try to make him look cool or change him to fit what the audiences think they want to see. Lean into what makes him special, and people will be interested in that. They could pull from the Gail Simone miniseries as inspiration, but he's also a prominent member of the Terrifics. It's a relatively new team, and there haven't been that many stories about them, but they're basically DC's ripoff of the Fantastic Four that they made while Marvel was too scared to make Fantastic Four comics because Marvel, like, as a company, was like, no, X-Men and Fantastic Four because this was back when Fox owned them, and they were like, we're not even gonna make comics about them. It was stupid business stuff, and it really, it was very frustrating, but the Terrifics was really cool. Also, that original run was written by Jeff Lemire, so of course it's a banger. Especially with half the team already confirmed for Superman Legacy, Mr. Terrific and Metamorpho, they could very easily introduce Plastic Man and Phantom Girl and do something really interesting with them. WB's actually been trying to make a Plastic Man movie for a while, with even a script written by the Wachowski sisters back in the 90s and Keanu Reeves of all people set to star. But it's been in development hell for such a long time and never really made it off the ground. But I don't think it'd be too much of a stretch to try again and give him his own movie. 
The next character I'd like to see is Vixen. Mari Macab was created in 1981 by Jerry Conway and Bob Oxner. She hails from the fictional African country of Zambesi and is able to harness the power of the animal kingdom through a magical necklace that's passed down through her family. Vixen is a character that I absolutely love, but who I don't think gets enough spotlight. There aren't many solo Vixen comics out there, but a movie could take inspiration from G. Willow Wilson and Carlos Urbano's miniseries Vixen Return of the Lion, which had her returning to her homeland after years away and taking down a warlord who had similar powers to her. She very easily has the capability to be a core member of the Justice League. Her powers are super easy for anyone to understand understand without any explanation, and there's opportunities for some really interesting visuals and use cases with her having to adapt to different situations. She's right in that like sweet spot of a power level where she's not totally overpowered and she won't mop the floor with anyone she fights, but she's still really capable and is able to do some pretty impressive stuff. And she has greater ties to the DC universe with her connection to the red. The red is the DC cosmic force that powers all animal life, just like Swamp Thing's the green, and could be an easy gateway to introduce other characters who are connected to it, like Animal Man and Beast Boy. Also, It'd just be nice to get some more girls on the Justice League. We could have more than two. That's okay. The next character I want to see is Mr. Miracle. Created by the comic legend Jack Kirby in 1971, Scott Free has his origin tied directly to the new gods in Kirby's fourth world. He's the son of Highfather from New Genesis and was traded to Apocalypse as a child, where he endured a harsh and abusive upbringing under Darkseid, before eventually escaping and making his way to Earth. A lot of people see the new gods in Darkseid as strictly Justice League villains, just some big bad, the DC equivalent of Thanos, and I definitely understand that comparison at first glance. I mean, Darkseid technically came first, but whatever, I'm not even going to get into that. But the mythology of the new gods in the fourth world is so much bigger than that. It really is a massive saga, an entire universe within itself, with so much lore and backstory and character relationships that it would be a shame to relegate them all to just nothing more than DC's big bad. And I think making Scott Free the point of view character of it all would be a perfect way to introduce us to such a complex topic. So much of Jack Kirby's work has been adapted onto screen, but it's either been oversimplified or watered down or, frankly, just made to look kind of boring. His art was super maximalist, constantly using groundbreaking techniques that were just mesmerizing on the page, and his stories were filled with so much love and life and color that to sap that away for the sake of realism would be a massive disservice. As for comic inspirations, I mean, it seems pretty obvious. There's of course Jack Kirby's incredible stories, but Tom King and Mitch Garrett's Mr. Miracle book is legendary. It's probably one of the best comics ever made. Normally, I'm not really a fan of directly adapting comics into live action, especially books that use the comics medium so heavily to their advantage like this one does, but this book is just perfect and every way. The way it discusses abuse and finding love through mutual trauma, like with Scott's relationship with Big Barda. Literally, there's nothing more I can say that the book doesn't say a hundred times better, and they're already adapting one of Tom King's books with Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, so what's one more? Ava DuVernay was actually going to be making something kind of similar with her New Gods movie, but that ended up going through development hell and didn't really make it off the ground. This one is kind of cheating in that it's not really a character, but a team, but that's Justice League Dark. The Justice League Dark was created in 2011 by Peter Milligan and Mikkel Janin, and is a team of heroes specifically from the magic and monsters side of the DC Universe. Like any team, the roster cycles around a bunch, but most notably it's consisted of John Constantine, Zatanna, Deadman, Etrigan the Demon, Swamp Thing, and sometimes even Wonder Woman. Guillermo del Toro has actually been trying to make a movie about them made for years. It's been one of his passion projects and for some reason just keeps getting away from him. But with James Mangold's Swamp Thing movie on the way, I think it could be a perfect lead-in to do something with this team. Not only could it lean really heavily into different horror elements, especially with someone like del Toro on board, but it could also expand the universe into more than just superheroes and capes. There are so many pockets of interesting things at DC, and to delve into those different worlds with different genres would help keep things from getting stale. I have a whole video on superhero fatigue and how I think expanding into different styles of genre could help prevent it, so go check that out if you're interested. There's so much inspiration you could pull from, but I really love that original New 52 run by Peter Milligan that told their origin and transitioned into Jeff Lemire's time in the book, which was fantastic. Once again, Jeff Lemire, the dude just rocks. Jesus, I can't believe we were this close to getting a DC movie by Guillermo del Toro and WB pulled the plug. Do you know how stupid you gotta be to mess that up? But then again, this is the same studio that announced a movie about the trench, canceled it when nobody seemed to care because who would care about that, and then said it was actually a secret Black Manta movie, so actually it tracks. This next one is also kind of cheating since we've already seen her in a movie, but that's Black Canary. The, you know I had to say, I'm, you know, it, listen, it's part of the brand at this point. The original Black Canary, Dinah Drake, was created in 1947 by Robert Koniger and Carmine Infantino. In the current interpretation, Dinah Lance first appeared in 1965 in JLA 75 by Denny O'Neill and Dick Dillon, a book that I own, by the way. Not to brag or anything, but I think that's pretty neat. Dinah Lance desperately deserves some more adaptation as a solo character, not just as Green Arrow's kick-ass wife or with the Birds of Prey. She has her own cast of interesting supporting characters, namely Sin, who frankly gets forgotten about way too much, if you ask me. She's one of the best fighters in the universe, and if you want my opinion, she could kick Batman's ass any day of the week, but maybe I'm a little biased. She has a great father-daughter kind of relationship with Wildcat, and you could really tell an interesting story about the legacy of Black Canary and her trying to carry that mantle after her mother. Hell, those connections that she has to the Golden Age JSA open up a ton of interesting possibilities 
least in the universe. And if you're wondering why I haven't mentioned Green Arrow on this list yet, it's because I already made a whole separate video on that. Uh, it's got a poem and everything. Go check it out. But yeah, I also really want to see Green Arrow. There are a ton of comics that a Black Canary movie could pull from. Gail Simone did a bunch of cool stuff during her Birds of Prey run. The New 52 solo book by Brendan Fletcher is pretty decent, all things considered. The New 52 overall was pretty limiting for a lot of characters, but I like how that book made her this punk rock superstar that could be a fun take for a movie. They actually made original music for like from the Black Canary band, which I think is really cool. You could do like some Scott Pilgrim stuff with it now that I'm thinking about it. That'd be really fun. The creator of Lovecraft County, Misha Green, was actually in the works to make a Black Canary solo movie with Journey Simelet coming back to play her. But with the change in leadership at WB, that sort of just ended in development hell. Wait, I'm sensing a pattern. The next character that desperately needs a movie is Nightwing. Dick Grayson was created in 1940 by Bill Finger. And who am I kidding? You know who Dick Grayson is. You clicked on the fucking video. But the Nightwing persona specifically was created in 1984 by Marv Wolfman and George Perez. After Dick Grayson left Batman and the mantle of Robin, he took on a new name and moved to a new city to start again. Nightwing is one of those characters that I think fundamentally defines DC, yet seems to get shafted when it comes to his adaptations. Along characters like Wally West, his character growth from a sidekick into his own hero is pretty legendary. And it's one of the few times that the big two comics allow for major development like that. Hell, his history even stuck through the New 52 reboot in 2011, which can't be said for a lot of others. And while he's still a pretty major part of the Bat family and those stories, he started to develop enough of his own lore and supporting characters outside of the shadow of Bruce Wayne. I think there's definitely some interesting potential when it comes to his relationship with Superman and maybe getting the inspiration for the Nightwing mantle from him in the history of Krypton, like in the comics. There are a lot of different things you could pull from for a Nightwing movie, and it honestly just comes down to how much of his origin you'd want to tell. Like, do you want to start with Robin and then have him become Nightwing at the end of Act 1 or at the beginning of Act 3? Like, I don't know. But I don't know if I'm really interested in that sort of story, and honestly would rather they just start the universe off and he's already left the cave and moved to Bloodhaven to make it on his own. Luckily, with Damien Wayne being the current version of Robin in the movies, that's looking to be pretty likely. As for the villain, it seems pretty obvious, but if you ask me, it's gotta be Deathstroke. So many people will tell you that Slade is a Batman villain, but in reality, he was always a Teen Titans and a Robin villain first before he got pulled into all the Batman stuff. I think his relationship with Nightwing is super interesting, and he's a really great threat for Dick to face off against. So long as he doesn't, you know do the gross stuff. I could also talk about Nightwing for hours. I could go super in depth and give a full pitch video on how a Nightwing movie could work. So uh, let me know down below if that's something you want to see because I need engagement on my videos to be able to make videos. We've actually been super close to getting a Nightwing solo movie. Chris McKay, the director of the Lego Batman movie, has been trying to get it out of development hell for years, but recently it was just confirmed that WB ended up, oh my God, are you fucking kidding me? And the character that I think deserves to be adapted into a movie the most is Static. Virgil Hawkins was created by Dwayne McDuffie and John Paul Leon in 1993 with Static number one. Not Static Shock, he's just Static. Listen, I understand the confusion. The show was really popular and it was really, really good. Like seriously, it was just ahead of its time. It's fantastic. But every time I hear somebody call him that, especially comic book journalists, it drives me fucking insane. That's not his name. With how successful the animated series was and how beloved Virgil is as a character, a Static live action movie feels like such a no brainer. Like that thing would basically just print money. Part of the reason we haven't seen anything is that there was actually kind of a nasty lawsuit a few years ago. Static was created as part of Milestone Comics, an imprint co founded by McDuffie in the 90s, focused on diverse characters and stories, and was forced to close in 1997. I guess it's kind of debatable if you even want to call Static a DC character, but he's on. He, it's my video, it's going to be on this list. McDuffie owned 50% of the company, including all of his stories and the characters, and when he tragically passed away in 2011, that ownership went to his wife and his family. In 2015, the company was relaunched as Milestone 2.0, and yet McDuffie's estate was seemingly cut out of the company altogether. Basically, they took control of all his creations and wanted to profit from his work without paying his family a single cent for it. This is starting to sound familiar but I can't quite put my finger on it. However, the lawsuit was settled in 2019, and while the details weren't disclosed, from the looks of it, it seems like good news for everyone, and McDuffie's family is happy with the new deal. And Milestone started printing comics again with DC back in 2020. As for comics they could pull from for a movie, any of Dwayne McDuffie's work is fantastic. The dude was seriously a legend. I can't overstate that. His impact on comics and superhero media is immeasurable. That original static run is filled with social commentary, both direct and allegorical, and it still really holds up today. But if they wanted to pull from something a little bit more modern, especially since static is like a young character, I feel like you kind of have to. There's a new line of Static Comics written by Vita Ayala, which was part of this widespread reboot of the Milestone Dakotaverse. It's really cool. The art's really cool. It takes the origin and it recontextualizes it for a more modern setting, and it even goes harder when it comes to the social commentary. I mean, the book is literally called Static Season 1. Like, they're basically begging this thing to get adapted. Michael B. Jordan actually announced a little while ago that he was going to be producing a live-action Static movie, but there haven't been any updates about it lately, and it looks like it kind of went into development hell because of, oh, come on! But really, there are so many different characters that DC could adapt into 
of movies that go just beyond the big names. This was only a handful of them, but if this video does well enough, then maybe I'll make a follow up and talk about some more ideas. And before you leave your snarky comment about how DC movies don't make any money, they should just stick to Batman, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. I am frankly a little sick of how box office numbers seem to dominate every conversation lately. Like with Blue Beetle, for example. Before that movie even came out, all people were talking about was if it was going to flop. I didn't see anybody talking about if they thought it looked good or what they wanted to see from it, just how much money they thought it was gonna make. And now that Blue Beetle is out, a movie that I frankly really loved because of the performances and the action and the practical effects and the direction and the themes and the characters and the genuine representation. I loved so much of that movie and then I look around and the entire conversation is still just, oh, it needs to make more money, oh, go help it make more money, it deserves more money. And listen, I get it, movies need to make money, we want this to get sequels, we want it to succeed and we want it to perform well, we want the people who made it to be able to make more things, I completely, completely get that. But at a certain point, putting so much emphasis on just the box office and the money is doing nothing but hurting our relationship with this media. If Blue Beetle ends up blowing up in the next few weeks with the word of mouth and an international release, that's great. But if it doesn't and it doesn't turn a profit, as much as that may suck, it's really not the end of the world. I love film not because of the business politics or the studio names or the box office, but because of the art of filmmaking and the art of storytelling. And that art can only be made by real people with genuine love and passion for the things that they create. The source material of DC Comics is truly so rich and beautiful, and there are a ton of creators and filmmakers who want to bring those stories to life in a new way, just like Angel Manuel Soto did with Blue Beetle. It doesn't matter how much money it makes, that love and that passion is still there regardless, and that never goes away. It used to be that the studio was a name that showed up at the beginning of a movie, and that's it. And now it feels like some people go to these movies just to see those studio names and nothing else. We're treating these films not as pieces of art made by real people to be enjoyed, but instead like they're just content. Like it's just a logo for a slate with a box office number attached to it. And if that number is too low, then that film, that piece of art made by people who put their heart and their soul into making it, is disregarded as a flop and we move on. And you know who else thinks that way? You know who else has that sort of relationship with art? Warner Brothers. The same studio that thinks more Batman is the solution to everything. The same studio that got in the way of a Wachowski Plastic Man movie, and a Guillermo del Toro passion project about the Justice League Dark, and Chris McKay's Nightwing, and Michael B. Jordan's Static. The same studio whose success relies solely on the work of their writers and their actors, yet aren't willing to pay them 0.1% of their earnings to give them a livable wage to afford healthcare, and instead want to replace them with fucking robots. If you ask me, maybe let's not be like Warner Brothers. Anyway, what was this video about again? Oh, right. But what DC characters would you like to see get adapted into a movie once they start paying their writers and their actors fairly? If you liked this video, be sure to like button and subscribe. Special thanks to 21 Escalators, Alto the Sting, Anz, Cassidy Bond, Cabbage Boy, Chicken McDoofus, Cosmic Tragedy, Deco.py, DJ Ricky 08, Egan McFarlane, Eden Kenna, Iron Ninja, Jake Selig, Jonah, Crispy Raccoon, Life by XL, Pencil Fan, Shay Ligged, Simply Dan, Tim Newfeld, Troyes by Razor's Lame, Tyler Goodrich, Josh Kapoor, Zachary Stonebreaker, and Zero to Hero 148 for being spectacular fanboys on my Patreon. This has been Troy Boy 17 coming at you live. Be responsible, and I'll see you around.